if you've been in church, obviously, for any amount of time, you um, are aware of something that pastors talk about quite a bit called outreach. Okay, um, so what what is that? And so we're going to look at really three main areas here. First off is discipleship. What is that? Second is uh, evangelism. What is that? And then third is ministry. What is that? And all these things are, are really connected. So let's let's start delving in. Okay, first, discipleship is basically one who is taught. It is a someone who who follows after someone and, and learns their ways. Okay, in the case of Christian discipleship, we are learning Christ's ways. We are following Him. We are living His way. Um, and to really be a Christian is to live Christ's way. It is to live life on His terms. John chapter 13, verse 35 says, By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. So meeting with the church doesn't make you Christ's disciple. It's just the same as, you know, pastor says a lot, you know, going to McDonald's makes you a, a cheeseburger. Or going into a garage makes you a car. It's just, it's, it, going to church has nothing to do with being a disciple. Now, I, I, I know that I've said multiple times about how you need to get involved in church, and that's how you grow, absolutely. But it doesn't make you a Christian. Okay, going through the motions doesn't either. You can go to, you can fool all kinds of people. You can, you can really ha make people look like you've got it all together, um, and be nothing more than a hypocrite. A lot of Christians do it, or people who call themselves Christians. Um, it, it doesn't, it doesn't make you a Christian though. Um, you aren't dead just because you're in a morgue. It's just not. That's just not how it is. It's a matter of the heart. Um, now I'm not saying Christians don't mess up, but I am saying that there's definitely a a heart change that has to happen. So disciples are teachable. They can be taught things. You know, if they're if they're sinning and somebody goes to them and says, hey, you should stop doing that. Um, do they learn the lesson? If the pastor has a note on something, you're like, hey, um, you know, you're, you're doing your ministry, you're doing a great job, but maybe you could be on time to start whatever it is you're doing. Well, you know, are you, are you able to take that as instruction? Now, see, what some people do is they just kind of get into and go, go start going to church, and they just assume that they have authority. They they, they try and, you know, uh, nag the pastor. Pastor, this is how you need to start running this church. They run other. They try to get involved in other people's ministries. Not involved, but, I mean, um, they try to nag them. They try to take over everything. That's not what I'm talking about at all. Can you be taught? Excuse me. Um, can you teach others? Do you have the ability? Do you love them? Do you serve them? And... Are you submitted to Christ's way of life? He was humble, and he loved people, and he kept God's purposes in mind. See, a lot of times what Christians do is they don't have God's interest in mind, and we're all prone to do it. Take, for instance, Christmas time. I have had a lot of people who were very upset, Christians who have been in the church a long time who are very upset that I didn't do the traditional Christmas service, and then I had a lot of people that had never been in church come and get very excited about what I did during Christmas because although it wasn't traditional Christmas, it gave them hope, and it showed them why Christ came. And so then you have these two, sadly to say, contrasting parties. This person's mad at you. This person's happy with you. At the end of the day, what did I do what Christ would have done? Was my purpose what Christ's purposes were? See, I know that they were. But at the end of the day, those other Christians who didn't like what I did, did they not like what I did because it broke their tradition, or did they not like what, what I did because it didn't reach people? See, my interest has to be God's interest. And God's interest is is seeking and saving the lost. Pastor said in a sermon recently, he was talking about um, sheep. And he was talking about the parable of the 99, uh, where, where the shepherd left the 99 to go after the one. And he, he said this, and I don't think I'll ever forget this. He said, the shepherd went to go get the one. Why didn't the other 99 go with him? Why were they unconcerned about the one? And I don't want to get too off track here, but 
is our focus what Christ's focus was? When Jesus came, there were a lot of traditions. There were a lot of traditions. But you don't really see Jesus getting overly distracted by them. Just interesting thoughts here. So it's a two-way street of being taught and teaching. It's a continual process also. Do you think pastor never grows? Do you think I never grow? We we are always in a state of growth. We read the Bible once, we get something, we read it again, we, read, we get something else. Excuse me. So on your sheet, the first fill in the blank is um, disciple, Christ's disciple. 1 Corinthians 5, 9 through 13 I wrote to you I wrote you in my letter not to associate with immoral people. I did not at all mean with the immoral people of the world or with covetous and swindlers or with idolaters for then you would have to go out of the world. But actually I wrote to you not to associate with any so-called brother if he is an immoral person, covetous, an, idol an idolater, a reviler, a drunkard, a swindler, not even to eat with such a one. Wow, some strong things there. For what have I to do with judging outsiders? Do you not judge those who are within the church, but those who are outside God judges? Remove the wicked man from among yourselves. And uh, let's go to the next point here. Disciples train others, who in turn train others. This is a model that is shown in First Second Timothy and Second Timothy, and it's this ongoing process. A changed life is really the greatest testimony. We're not talking about perfection. We're talking about striving after the Lord. Yes, I mess up. I get up and I seek after the Lord. I don't depend on my goodness. I depend on his. Um, so obviously, you have, there, there's as a disciple of Christ, there's this balance of not living in sin, but you are still human. You do still make mistakes. Um, and so get rid of the idea of um, you have arrived. You never arrive. You keep on pressing on to Christ. Well, that feels kind of hopeless. Just get through this day and as you keep on getting through one day at a time you, your your view will start changing um, discipleship is a lifestyle of continual growth in the lord that is what it's all about um, revelation 2 26 um, says this he who overcomes and he who keeps my deeds until the end to him i will give authority over the nations and then in um hebrews 6 uh, 6, 7 through 8. Boy, that's really easy to remember. Hebrews 6, 7 through 8. It says, For ground that drinks the rain which often falls in it and brings forth vegetation useful to those for whose sake it is also tilled, receives a blessing from God. But if he yields thorns and thistles, it is worthless and close to being cursed, and it ends up being burned. Talking about growth, talking about discipleship. Um, in 10, 22 through 24 of the same book, um, let us draw near with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Um, so then Romans 8.14 And once again, just because you've watched this, go back and, and study this stuff. Go back and pause the video, re read the scriptures, and, and just kind of immerse yourself with, with, with what the passage is saying. For all those who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. So um, that's pretty close. That's one more thing. On your sheet, discipleship is a lifestyle of continual growth. Growth is the missing um, fill in the blank. So that takes us to the second thing. In our discipleship, okay. So now evangelism. With evangelism, is basically what that means is witnessing to people, telling them about Jesus. So in the past, it's been kind of done something like this. There you are. You know what I mean? It's us versus them. You need to come here. If you see what I mean? But if you look and read this, read the Gospels, Jesus didn't go to the temple to reach people. He was out in the streets. He was out, you know, walking around and going into people's houses, those kinds of things. So kind of change the perspective of there you are to 
here we are. I'm sorry, uh, I said that backwards. Wow. Let me let me read that. This is what I was thinking in my head. Here we are, like we are here for you. But I said that backwards. So let me let me start over again. Not having the here we are, you know, us versus them, but going to them and having the there you are. I knew as I was saying that that didn't sound right. You know, we want to be someone who revolves around them. So there you are. You know, how can we? How can we? Um, how can we? Uh, how can we reach you? You know discipleship and evangelism that kind of stuff it's about getting our eyes off of ourselves so uh, 1 Corinthians 9 23 says this uh, I do all things for the sake of the gospel so that I may become a fellow partaker of it all things for the sake of the gospel so there's been traditional evangelism this is street witnessing you go and bother people in Walmart uh, you know, you have your Sunday services and you just kind of expect people to show up because once again, here we are, come, come get it if you want. Other than that, you know, whatever, um, hospital visits, which that's, that's still pretty effective. You know, sometimes, uh, sometimes people, um, actually, um, stop coming to church if, uh, you visit them in the hospital. I don't, I don't know how that works, but you know, whatever. Um, I'm not saying you shouldn't visit people in the hospital. I'm just saying um, maybe do it as a friend, not as trying to get someone to go to church. Um, going on missions trips, um, still fairly effective, but usually missions trips are, are short-term, and to really make an impact, you have to go somewhere and really write it out, stick in there. Um, preaching, yes, but once again, sometimes people don't want to hear the preacher because they've already judged him before he even talks, which leads us to the more non-traditional um, ways of evangelism. Food pantry. I see your need. I'm doing what I can to help you. Community service. Um, like, for instance, I'm not talking about community service like when you get out of um, in incarceration. I'm talking about, um, you know, like uh, doing something on Halloween night for the kids. Um, doing something on Easter, that kind of stuff. Um, counseling, where, you know, hey, I'm getting married, I just have a few questions, that kind of stuff. Um, not just pastors can do this. I mean, um, be a wise person where people would want to uh, to ask. Um, lifestyle, how you live is a great example and witness to people. Um, attitudes, uh, when you are a forgiving person, you know, hey, my dad wasn't there for me growing up, and I, you know, um, I got into drugs and stuff, and, and you know what? It, I just forgave him and moved on. Now, I'm not saying that happened to me. I'm saying, you know, example. Um, prayer is a great way of witnessing to people, not just being available to pray for them, but praying for them. You know, in, in your daily prayer routine, just remember to pray for people. Remember people who are suffering. Remember people who are hurting. Um, and when you're witnessing to people, be tactful and be wise. You don't go up to somebody and just say, you sinner, you need to repent. Well, I mean, people have done that in the past, but it's just not very not very effective. It had this whole mentality to it, you know. It's us versus them. I am this, you know, super righteous person, and you are trash. So you sinner versus how can I show them Christ's love? A lot of times people know that they're living that they're living in sin. Um, you see it happen a lot with uh, homosexual people. They're so used to Christians saying, hey, you need to repent, that they don't even, they've never experienced God. They don't really even know about the gospel. They don't know what it's about. All that they know is that you don't approve of their lifestyle or you know, that God doesn't approve of their lifestyle. It doesn't matter in this case because either way, they're hardened to the message. So once again, switching the mindset from, oh, here we are, you know, we're just doing our own thing, and you know, to there you are. Let's let's focus on on the on people. Let's let's love people. <laughs> or once again, if you want to say it backwards like, like I did originally, um, you know, oh well, there those people are over there. Let's watch them hurt. <laughs> now that you know, it, it's funny when you say something wrong. Sometimes you think, oh, it actually could be understood like that. Anyways, um, so on your sheet. There are, so far, um, no fill in the blanks, but here there's coming up one. Um, be genuine when you're talking to people about Jesus. Nobody likes a fake. You don't have to pretend to have your life together. You don't have to pretend to have all the answers. Just be real with people. People can tell. 
And it doesn't reinforce the message of Christ. It just pretends Christians don't have struggles, but that's far from the truth. Everybody has struggles. Everybody has struggles. So on your on your form there, nobody likes a fake. Fake is the uh, fill in the blank. If someone asks you a hard question, be honest. Oh, come on, be honest. I don't know. I can try to find out, but stay on track. Distractions from um, from the message of Christ don't have to be addressed all at once. You know, look, I, I, I don't know. I can try and find out, but what I really want to talk to you about is, you know, Christ has changed my life, and you know, I, it's just so, it's so liberating, and I have such joy, and uh, you know, I, you know, be real with them, and you're not trying to make them feel like, oh, God does nothing but bless me. I mean, obviously there's still struggles, but be honest. That's really one of the most valuable things you can you can do. And here's the thing: you can't always be prepared for everything. You can study books, you can study the Bible, you can stay in prayer, but ultimately you can't always be prepared for everything. You just have to trust that when hard questions come, the Holy Spirit will will guide you. And that's what he said he would do. So don't worry about it. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1-6 through 6 says this. And when I came to you, brethren, I did not come with superiority of speech or of wisdom, proclaiming to you the testimony of God. I didn't come to you with this high and exalted, you know, thing. For I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in de demonstration of the Spirit and of power. So that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. Um... So you can't always be prepared. Reach out to people and rely on the Holy Spirit to guide you. It's, it's not about you. It's not about being perfect. It's about God. So all your job is to do is reach out to people. Uh, Proverbs 14.4 And here's the thing. When you're witnessing to people, don't get, don't get upset if the results aren't immediate. You just... You just go do do the job, and God God will take care of other things. Where no oxen are, the manger is clean, but much revenue comes by the strength of the ox. In other words, when you when when you when you deal with people, there's going to be crap. <laughs> and uh, it, it's like this. It's like this. If you have a small church, no kids church, no kids, you're not really going to have to worry about kids writing on the walls, but where you are reaching kids, then you're going to have to worry about kids causing a distraction, writing on the walls, those kinds of things. But you're also doing the work of the kingdom. So it's easier to say, you know what, I'm tired of cleaning up all this crap. Let's not have any oxen. But without those oxen, you can't get anything done. It's the same with, with witnessing to people. Oh, I don't want those types here. I'm pretty sure there's room at the cross for everyone. So... It's not about you. If you are rejected by someone, you know what? Keep going. Go, go to someone else. It's okay. Um, first off, you don't know if God's doing something in them or will later do something. And you don't want to waste your time moping over that one who didn't want to listen and overlook the ones who did want to listen. Don't lose sight of the many who will accept for the one that didn't. Always, excuse me, always assume they will come around eventually. Just keep your keep your temper, tell them, and if they don't want to listen, hey, that's okay. Um, but remember, it's easier to hear something from a friend. So if you're friendly with people, they're more likely to listen to you. And I'm not saying try fake. I'm being for real be friendly with people. And here's the thing. You really have no right to get offended in ministry because it's between them and God, not them and you. If they reject you, they're actually rejecting God, not you. So find a way to serve people and realize your words won't save. If it's not a work of the Holy Spirit, the person won't get saved anyways. So having perfect words and doing everything perfect, it's not it, it's not going to matter. It's about God's kingdom and it's about God's ways. So let's talk about ministry. Discipleship is the process of us growing and helping others to grow. Evangelism is the process of going out and reaching people where they are. And ministry is serving others for their benefit. Ministry is doing is is the actual thing itself. Like for instance, we have a young adults group. That is a ministry. 
um, answering hard questions is my ministry. It's my way of serving others. Does that make sense? But when you're doing a ministry, you have to make sure you do it for their benefit. Everything we do as Christians have to be for their benefit. Um, if I'm doing it for their benefit, then it doesn't matter how I'm treated. <laughs> You know, sometimes you you know things, but then you go through things and you're like, ooh, learn that lesson in a brand new way. Matthew 10, 24 says, a disciple is not above his teacher, nor a slave above his master, if Jesus was rejected. Listen to the master's hurt when you are hurt. How did he respond? What's his focus? See, God has been spurned. Spurned? God has been rejected by people, countless people for countless generations, and yet, do you see him just getting frustrated and giving up? No, you see him still working in people. And don't carry over the baggage of one bad situation to the next person. Oh, this person will just, you know, not listen because that person didn't listen. Uh, the ministry of the church is serving God, reaching the lost, and making disciples of the saved. We help those who are saved to grow. We help those who are not saved to be saved, and we worship God. It's it's a really um, overly simple thing. Um, sometimes we overly complicate it, though. <laughs> Acts 2.42 says, They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. I'm not going to read all those um, all those uh, passages there, but they're on your sheet if you're interested. Um, if okay, listen. To, okay, I said that ministries are how the um, ministries are how the body accomplishes its ministry. Uh, Sunday services, young adult meetings, Bible studies, um, Halloween uh, night, the thing that we do on Halloween. Um, you know things like that. Those are those are ministries. Sometimes you can even turn a job into a ministry, where you are impacting your coworkers. Um, I'm not saying always talking about Jesus. I'm saying being there for them. Um, so is God calling you to a special area of service? Is there something that you see that would benefit the church and the community? Um, what skills, belongings, and passions do I have that can be invested in others? Okay, like knitting or something. Well, what can you do with that? Is it biblical? Okay, all right. And is it needed? And am I able to do it? Just some real quick questions. Not able as in my own strength, but as in, is it within my power? Do I have money to give to orphans, for instance? See, sometimes we want to do things until we get kind of burned out. But that's not really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about doing it anyways. And is it within my power? to do the certain thing. Um, are there... Matthew 28, let's, let's read that one. Matthew 28, 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Um, So in Exodus 31, I mentioned it in another lesson, but um, talking about Bezalel and Aholiab and how they had gifts that God was able to use. And 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 says, For he has said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. See, sometimes we don't think that we can do something, and we're probably right. But God will, um, God will guide us through those times. So, are there any open doors? That's a very important thing uh, when you're looking for where to get plugged in. Um, lead by example in your services, service of others, and worship of God. Live your life where people can, um, where, where people can see God through you. First Peter three nine says. Not returning evil for evil or, um, or insult for insult, but giving a blessing and said, For you were called for the very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. So then the next fill in the blank, submit yourself to authority. 
um, are, um, so a leader who is his or her own authority rejects God's authority for their own. Um, so basically, instead of doing things God's way, I'm going to do things my way. Because God has placed those people in authority, and they are, um, we, we run things through them. We don't just say, hey, pastor, I'm doing this. We say, hey, pastor, what would you think of doing, what would you think if I did this? Um, so we keep each other in check. We're not, our, we're not an island. Um, well, I'll read Hebrews 13, 17. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with grief, for this would be unprofitable for you. So continually grow. Continually grow and seek God, even if it's hard. Continually grow and seek God, even if it's hard. Ministry is only accomplished through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Don't ever think that I did this. Never think, oh, I did this. It's always God who did it. He may have used you, but it was God who did the work. When you start thinking, oh, I did this, you're cruising for a bruising. The church is a community which reaches outward towards people, upward towards God, and inward towards each, towards each other to help each other. So let's break that down outward. Do we treat everyone as though they are as important to us as they are to God? Upward, is everything we do matching up with the statement, God is my God? Inward, do we correctly judge ourselves in motive, why we do things, action, what we do, attitude, the attitude we do it with, and word, the things that we say? See, ministry is difficult. If you're in it for long enough, there will be problems. The only way to not get hurt by a church is to never go to church and never do anything for God. <sighs> so, on your sheet there, ministry is only accomplished through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Church is community. Ministry is difficult. Don't get discouraged at the bad. Rumors, attacks, failures. Sometimes things like that happen. It sucks, but they still happen. So, um, I'm not going to read that passage. Uh, basically, just control your, your 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 thoughts. As long as you're doing, um, as long as you are doing as the Lord commanded, they are attacking the Lord, not you. The problem is sometimes we go off and do our own thing, and then we say, "Oh, I'm suffering." Well, that's because you did the wrong thing. Like for instance, um, let's say I, I I cuss out my brother. And so he punches me in the face, and now the whole family's mad at me. And, you know, oh, well, I'm just being persecuted. Well, I brought it on myself, you know. <laughs> but as long as you're doing as the Lord commanded, you're loving people, you're serving them, they're, you're living under authority, they're attacking the Lord, not you. Um, and you know the difference. If, if you're in ministry and you've been in ministry and you're really just trying to stick to it and, and it just seems like thing after thing and you're just being really assaulted um, by the enemy and, and that kind of stuff, um, and by the way, people are not the enemy. I'm talking about Satan here. Um, they're attacking the Lord, not you. And uh, I may not be old, but I have gone through a lot of just nonsense um, within the context of the church. And so I do know what I'm talking about here. But, uh, you know, just press forward. Make sure you are maintaining a biblical life. Sometimes we, okay, well, I was doing what's right, but now, now I'm going to start talking bad about them. Christians are saved because of grace, therefore all are equal in the body. Don't ever feel like you are better. Whoops, sorry, I missed that. Don't ever, where did it go? There it is. Don't ever feel like you are better, smarter, or more spiritual than someone else. Don't ever feel like, man, oh man, you're just the epitome of awesome. James chapter 3, verse 16. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every evil thing. Jealousy. Ooh, I want that. And selfish ambition. All about me. Christians are saved by grace. And if we are saved by grace, then that means we are all equally unworthy, which means we are all equal in the body. Equality within the body does not mean there is not an authority structure. Just because the pastor and you are both equally Christian doesn't mean that there's no such thing as authority. Um, different people have different roles, and they are appointed by God. 
Now, if you've ever been appointed as a pastor, you understand how difficult that, that is. So don't do stuff that makes his job harder. Do things that make his job easier. You know, offer to help with stuff. Don't always have a criticism. You know, pastors don't want to hear you say, oh, that was a really good sermon every week. They want to see you grow. They want to see you invite people. Invite people. Bring, bring your friends into the, into the church. That, that's what we want to see. We want to hear about how you've been reading through the Bible. We want to hear about how you've been praying for people. We want to hear that kind of stuff. We don't want you to sit there and pat us on the back and tell us about how good we're doing. About That's not what we're interested in. We want to see you grow. Um, so don't try to do ministry by yourself or without the Holy Spirit. That's just a recipe for disaster. Um, Genesis 2.18. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I'll make him a helper suitable for him. It is not good to be alone. If you don't have to and shouldn't attempt... You don't have to and shouldn't attempt building a home alone. It would be not very smart if a single person was to build an entire house by themselves. Can you imagine standing standing the walls by yourself, laying the concrete foundation you have to get in the truck, pour it, or if you wanted to do it all by hand, which would be nonsense, uh, you know, smooth it out. And it, nobody should do that. And it's the same with, with ministry. Ministry is building in people's life. How much more important is it than building a house? So you shouldn't do it alone. And there is really no substitute for the Holy Spirit. He guides and directs us and just makes everything we do more beneficial. No matter how important you are, you need to depend on Christ daily. Oh, well, I'm a big shot. Okay. Well, remember that you're standing before God Almighty. And I'm pretty sure your little position will mean absolutely nothing when you die and go to heaven. Or you know, God forbid, hell. Um, even Christ had to separate himself for renewal. He, never think that, you know what, I've got this whole thing together. I, I don't need anybody else. I can do it all by myself. I, I, I don't even need God. I can just keep going. You know, us as pastors, a lot of what we do is spending time with God. A lot of what else we do is <laughs> cleaning up messes and, and, and fellowshipping with people. That kind of stuff. Um, getting to know people, that kind of stuff. So, But even Christ, um, who, remember, is God, went and separated himself from the crowds to get alone with God and renewed himself, renewed his spiritual strength, his energy. You can't keep pouring into people without getting refilled by God. Um, you are never too busy or too needed to not seek after the Lord. Oh, well, my work doesn't really allow for it then you need to move something around, give up some work, find a different job, something. You have to include God in your daily, daily schedule. Um, you, are no, you are not too important for God, no matter how you look at it. Um, you need to depend, depend on Christ every day is the fill in the blank there. Um, Matthew 14, 23. It says, After he had sent the crowds away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray, and when it was evening, he was there alone. Have regularly scheduled vacations. Um, excuse me. Boop. Especially if your job, you have a job and you do ministry as like a, a um, volunteer thing. That's like working two jobs. Um, have regular scheduled vacations um, throughout the year. Have days of rest throughout every week. Um, to ensure you don't push yourself too hard, spiritually or emotionally. We just, as people, cannot take constant going, going, going. There has to be a point when we say, okay, let's take a break. Um, so just a few final thoughts. God can use anything to form us to the image of Christ. We are of the same body if we follow the same God. Just, let's just take these things little bit by little bit. Um, God can use anything to form us in the image of Christ. We go through hard times. God is using that to help us grow. We go through lack of finances. God is using that to help us grow. We are going through a time of complete betrayal, and we just feel like God has just abandoned us. He's using that to help us grow. So we are of the same body if we follow the same God. For instance, we cannot be united with other religions. The fill in the blank there is religions. Um, that's not the church. See, sometimes when we're trying to do outreach, we then go and say, you know what? 
um, let's go ahead and break down all the walls and let's you know start doing stuff with with Buddhists and stuff and there really can't be much connection with people who reject God um, so we can't be united with a Jehovah's Witness um, they don't serve God they believe in multiple gods they they don't know who Jesus is they don't know about the Bible they just they just follow man's traditions over what God said we M Muslims serve a different God Allah is not the same as our God uh, Mormonism they follow the the um, unprovable revelation of an angel um, Hindus who serve multiple gods uh, Buddhists who kind of just seek themselves in a, in a large way there's only one way to the Father Jesus and although we can have people of other faiths um, help us in things like the food pantry we can't as a body everyone is open to join the body by accepting Jesus Christ but you can't be a part of the body if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ Jesus Christ is the thing that makes us part of the body. So do they believe in the same Bible? Do they believe in the same God? There's only one way to the Father, Jesus. I mean, that's that's in your sheet there, it's John 14, 6, absolutely. Um, so final absolute truth is in the Bible revealed to us by God himself. So if you look on your th on your sheet there, that's the end of that. Ask, do they believe in the same Bible? Not literally ask them, ask yourself. Um, so uh, if you have any questions about this lesson, um, post it below. Otherwise, the idea of, of outreach here is trying to get people, not trying to give people hope in and of itself. Not trying to give people purpose in and of themselves, but trying to give them true hope in Jesus Christ, trying to reach people with love, trying to serve them, not trying to get them, you know, to believe in, you know, some aura that's just floating out there, but get them to believe in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation. He's the only answer to our problems. He's the only way to break the chains of addiction in our life, the chains of hopelessness. Christ is our only hope. And although it's good to give people hope. We cannot substitute true hope of Jesus Christ with just giving people false hope. Oh, hey, everything's going to work out. Not without Christ, it's not. Without Christ, it will never work out. You cannot be a Buddhist and find true happiness. You cannot be a Hindu and find true happiness. So um, we're trying to keep focused on what sets us free, Jesus Christ. We're trying to do it lovingly and tactfully, not telling people you're just a sinner. And we're trying to grow, and we're trying to help other people grow, and uh, we have a clear